dab, 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 dab. Got to open the vocals up here. Mm-hmm. It's recording, by the way. Oh, fuck. Hello, and welcome to another exciting episode of Critical Thinking Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle, along with my co-host, Rick the Rizzo. And this is a critical look at all things gaming, movies, collectibles, and so much all more. All right, now let's, let's go ahead and, you know, let's keep this ball going as we go on. I'm Rick the Rizzo here. Let's talk about myself for a little bit. Yes, I mumble. I mumble. Or we'll fucking start calling you Rick the Mumble Rizzo. Rick the Mumbler. Uh, uh, just your average guy, big guy, for all you ladies out there. <laughs> I'm not gonna say nothing. Gonna, just go with it. Just go. With we're it. gonna clean that up later. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you may have to clean that up later. Yeah. Uh, anyways, yeah, I'm just your normal guy that's uh, been watching movies for shit. I'm, I'm old. Toward, I'm old, so yeah, I've been yeah, watching movies for a long time. Never had my opinions, you know, thrown out there. So I figured this is a good way to do it. Um. Average gamer, big nerd here. Average, very average gamer. Uh, love to play games, movies, TVs. Uh, I guess that would make the reason why I'm a big guy because I'd rather go do that than go to the gym. <laughs> you know, I don't know. And then you got know, my my co-host here, Mister Mister Kyle. Been into gaming since as far as I can remember. Games, toys, comics, movies. You name it, I've been into it. Um, the more y'all get to know me, the more I'm into figurines. Love figurines. Huge collection of McFarlane figurines. Um, overall, we pretty much got into this because one, we're smart asses, and two, we love talking shit about movies. And we're going to be looking at gaming news, movie news, all around, just everything. And it, old old classics. We're going to be bringing back some old classics, talking about some movies that most people have just kind of plum forgot about. They didn't. Mm-hmm. They don't even think about them anymore, and realizing because of all the new movies. Um, that are coming out how you know little we don't you know focus on the old movies that have or make these movies possible yeah and then also we're also going to bring in like you know old shows that you can binge on old tv shows that you can come in like that we saw when we were younger and now it's like oh this is something you have to watch because it was a good show it gave a good message too and and made you laugh especially the ones that make you laugh those are the ones are the best and then sometimes we'll go ahead and bring you some cheesy ones we're like oh my god can you believe we watched this when we were younger and oh, yeah. extremely cheesy, but it was good. Oh yeah, yeah no, fantastic. That's that's, the, that's another thing too. Like I'm a huge series watcher, big Game of Thrones fan. Um, just finished up the Voltron series that's out on Netflix. Um, I think a lot of times we look at them like I and I skipped over it. I actually was going to skip over the Voltron series until Rick here was like, no, no, you got to watch it. It's it's not exactly the original, but it's not exactly not. So I was like, okay, cool. I'll take a look at it. I mean, it's been decades you know and you you forget how good and sometimes how good they can be because there's a lot of junk out there there's a lot of things that claim to be something and they're not and um that's what we're hoping to weed through and kind of give you our little opinion on them that's all yeah, good uh, well and collectibles wise you know kyle did mention that he's a big collectible i used to not be a really good collectible person but you know i was a you know every kid you just play with your toys you open it whatever and then now i find out when i'm older i'm all like shit why did the hell did i destroy these things or why do, yeah let's put a firework on these little army men and you realize that this if if you would have kept those things up army men back then you know they're like expensive now be like awesome I mean like oh crap i blew that up with the fucking uh, firecracker firecracker you know it's like <laughs> damn you oh, know? Man. i had i had the original voltron uh when i was a kid i remember playing with it i remember having he-man i remember having i think i still do somewhere in my parents attic mm-hmm. i remember um having Tons of toys, and I never stopped. I actually, um, in high school, started collecting more, um, just getting into it more and more. And then I kind of was pulled out of it in my own right. I stopped collecting. I stopped getting into it. I guess you know, as you grow up, you think, well, I'm going to get out of my nerd habits, you know, and I'll just, I'll, you know, focus on being an educated adult. And then you find out being an adult is fucking boring. Like you know, mm-hmm. it's like <laughs> it's work. Come home, go to bed. Go to work. Come home, go to bed. Mm-hmm. For me, it's like the nerdism never came out. I remember being in high school playing um, Warcraft 2. I remember getting made fun of because I used to read the strategy guide and uh, being picked on a lot. And I think to myself, you know what? I look back now and I'm like, no, I don't. I still do that shit now. Like, I'm mm-hmm. you know, 34 and I'm like, I love it. Like I And I still have time. We still have time to be adults. We, me and Rick sit here and be adults all the time. But 
it, it brings us back to where we are nerds and it's okay to be a nerd and you know there's nothing wrong with it you know mm. oh man i remember going to your house with uh, your brother and we used to binge play uh, diablo 2 until mm-hmm. like I, my eyes couldn't stay open and your mom was looking at me like are you gonna go home me home like hey, no. <laughs> no i'm gonna play you know i remember one time we stayed up playing um metal gear solid on your playstation and um i got uh we left your house and uh, it was probably around shit two thirty in the morning on a Saturday night, and I got pulled over by the cops because I was so tired <laughs> that I almost missed a stop sign. This cop pulls me over. He's like, "You've been drinking," and I, all I could think of was like, "No, I've just been playing video games." And my eyes were so bloodshot. You know, just to sit here and have this guy look at you like, "That's not true. You've been drinking," and he's handcuffing me and sitting me down. And I'm like, "Dude, I don't smell like alcohol. I don't even know what alcohol is. I'm a nerd. Like, I don't, I don't do any of that kind of stuff." You know, and then. Um, Oh, yeah. the, this was before us buying surge or, or anything to keep oh, us up. Dude, yeah, we were Joel. Remember Joel Cola? <laughs> Holy shit! I remember Joel Cola. But you know, I look back now, and I was telling our friend here, I was like, you know, we really need to get back to our nerd. It never stopped. I mean, my house is still nerd. This is, you know, my little layer in my house, and we have tons of nerd stuff. And I, I it kind of saddens me to think that I was going to box all this stuff up and just give it away. You know, and I'm lucky enough to be able to, you know, dedicate a room to it. And most of the stuff is, you know, some of it's not even mine. It's, you know, it's my soon to be wife's. And it's like, you know, hey, you know, it's like there are other people out there that like what you like, that do what you do. Don't give it up if you like doing it. It's dumb because I look back now and I was like, man, I should have kept kept collecting McFarland toys. I stopped, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, and I have tons of them. I mean, there must be over like two or three hundred in this room. You know, it's like ridiculous. (laughs) Yeah, I got into pops now, and I, you know, I'm only collecting right now. I mean, I would, I would, if I went to a store where all the pops were, oh my god, I would be extremely broke. I'd be so far broke you wouldn't know. So I just kind of look for the exclusives right now, but I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it's gonna get pretty big because the, the exclusives are coming more and more now. Exactly. Yeah. Well, we're gonna be doing crate openings here. We got quite a few crates on the way. We're gonna be opening them up, but at the same time, going through some of the different loot crates, different companies. Um, you know, just seeing what's out there and seeing what's available. It saddened me to find out that McFarlane is no longer really massively producing his uh, Spawn collection. But like I said, I, I you find that there's a lot of neat little things. And a lot of people think they're dumb or they're dorky. But the truth is, is that, you know, everything in its own right. I remember playing, you know, guitars. or I'm hugely into cars. Of, you know, most of you all find out I'm a mechanic. That's what I do for a living. But even then, it's it's not never stuff that you need. It's always stuff that you want, no matter what it is. And I find that, you know, we need that in our lives. It's just something about having that uh, nerdy, dorky mm-hmm. things. Like, you know, it's that little joy that kind of brings you and also kind of pulls you back, you know, into this adulthood that you are. But it kind of pulls you back into that childhood that when you were the most happiest. Oh, yeah. And then you can stay in that and be happy at the same time. No bills, no responsibilities, just mm-hmm. being dorks with your friends. You know, you miss that time. You miss that time when you can be. And I think that's what movies, games, comics, um, I think that's what does for us. It brings us back to a time when we were less. You can be an adult and be a nerd and still, you know, you know, relish over, you know, nerdy things. And now, like I said, with social media, the Internet, you know, eBay, the, all these you know websites that dedicate and, and focus on it. You can still be that and still have that. And now you actually have money. So you can actually go buy things. You know, I remember like scrounging up my pennies to buy one new McFarlane toy because it was nine ninety nine, And, you know, now they're like $30, $40. But still, it's like, man, still, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. And everything. Well, that's that's a pretty good sum of how we are. And that's how we'll always be. That social media now has given us the ability to talk about the things that we want to talk about and bring the things that we want to the table um, to share with you guys, to share our passion for what it is that we really like to do. And um, hopefully, you know, you enjoy it. Yeah. All right. Well, now let's go ahead and get into the movie news. Movie news! (laughs) Well, let's see. The box office this weekend, you know, it is June, uh, from June 17th to the 19th, you know, and Finding Dory came out. Yeah, that was this this past weekend. This past weekend, and... Yeah, it blew the market. It made uh, 135 mil. Yeah, out of opening it. weekend. Opening weekend, and it was number one. All right, number two also was in the movie that came out, Central Intelligence with Dwayne Johnson. You know, but they've been marketing that movie everywhere. Mm-hmm. I can't yeah. even open up my Pandora, get gas. I mean, everywhere I go, it's you know, and uh, it's just freaking The Rock and Kevin Hart mm-hmm. talking shit to each other. You know. Yeah. And uh, well, they came in. They made 35 mil. Mm-hmm. on that movie you know right there for being coming in new and it, it came in at number two i was like oh cool i was like yeah i wanted to go see that movie and i might still go see it 
Just not anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> Number three uh, came in was The Conjuring 2. Any of y'all are a horror fan. Uh, this is like half horror, uh, suspense, and true story uh, because of the couple that goes to these houses and they, they perform exorcisms and everything. It wasn't a bad movie. Uh, my mother went to see it. She told me she enjoyed it. It did make you jump. It made you kind of scared at times. And uh, I don't believe, you know, I don't, I don't blame it. Last, uh, the week before, it was number one. And now it dropped to number three because, like, come on, how is that going to compete to Finding Dory? Mm-hmm. Parents are taking kids everywhere. And uh, it made 14 mil, 14 mil uh, this week. And then number four is uh, Now You See Me 2. Uh, I don't know if you ever seen Now You See Me, the first one. No. It was interesting. It wasn't bad. Um, I was curious about the second one. Uh, it only made nine mil. Uh, it was number three last week, so it dropped down to number four. Uh, our favorite movie, one of our favorite movies, was Warcraft. I mean, we had our, we both enjoyed the movie and everything. That was number five mm-hmm. and made seven mil this week. Uh, I don't know. I didn't get the full total of everything it's made totally, but uh, they made enough where, yeah, they're already talking sequel for this one. So, and I was hoping they would. And it did, it did well here. It did well here as well. But, you know, like I said, it went from. Number three to, f- uh, excuse me, number two to five. It dropped pretty much a good jump. But uh, I still, you well, know. You're competing with Finding Dory and Central mm-hmm. Intelligence. They're mm-hmm. going to, there's, there's no competition. The market, the, the movie market itself is like just every weekend putting out a big thing. It's not going to be able to stay on top. Yeah, true. And then number six come in X-Men Apocalypse, which uh, I'm sorry to say I haven't seen yet. Uh, but that went from number five to six. I got, I got the pleasure of seeing that one in the theater, so... You know, overall, you know, it wasn't a bad movie. It was not bad. It wasn't like the most amazing movie I've ever seen, X Men style, but it was not a bad movie. Definitely worth watching in the theaters. Cool, cool. It made five mil. Uh, numbers coming in. Number seven was uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles two. Uh, was it Out of the Shadows? I believe it was. Yeah, yeah. I haven't. I haven't had the chance to see. I haven't that had a chance to see either. That went from number four to seven. It made five mil. I'm surprised. I did not even know this one came out. On number eight, which was Alice looking through the looking ga- glass. Yeah, they were. It was all over the place, and then it just kind of disappeared. Yeah. Um. So I don't. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't even know it had come out. So. And so it stayed at number eight. Yeah. I had no interest in seeing it. Anyhow. I didn't even like the first one yeah. at all. I was like, what the no. Yeah. It was. It was something. It made four mil. Mm-hmm. And then you have Me Before You, which I have no idea what that movie is. That came in at number nine, with three mil. That was number six last week, but now it's number nine. And filing off the number uh, the ten spot was uh, Captain America: Civil War, which I had the joy of going to see the movie. I thought it was a good movie. Yeah, just to make a note on that one. It so far has made over four hundred million dollars. Wow. Yeah, still in theaters. So <laughs> that thing's raking it in. Right? Yeah, and that and just this weekend it just added two mil, you know, to make it that. And that came in. That was nine last week, and now it's ten. Uh, is there anything else you want to add to the movie? Um, the box office numbers. No. no, no. All right, and then some new new trailers that were released. Trailer time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, right before the show, uh, we got to Kyle. I, he saw the list here, and he actually looked at some of them. So we had uh, what's it called? Mo Mona. Mona. Mona yeah. with the. Uh, That's the one with the rock in it, right? Yeah, it's got. That's Dwayne. Disney's uh, like little princess uh, from Hawaii kind of thing, kind of going on. Yeah. 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 Um, that's Disney, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I saw the preview for that, um, a while back, the teaser, and I just saw the preview. All I got to say is it's going to be good just because I don't see them baking bad films like that. Although yeah, they did, I did not like Frozen at all, mm-hmm. but I think that they're going to do okay with this. The Rock's just an mm-hmm. overall funny mm-hmm. character. He always does funny characters. So if it isn't good, I'm excited to see it, but I don't know if I'm going to be rushing to the theaters mm-hmm. to sit mm-hmm. with a bunch of kids, mm-hmm. you know, to watch it, you know. Yeah, that one will be released on November 23rd of this year. Uh, the next one that was new that came out was Pete's Dragon, which is a remake. It's a live action remake of, of Pete's Dragon. Pete's the, Dragon, the, the cartoon. But the, the, it was originally live action and cartoon, one of the earlier generations of that, oh, the okay. original back in the day. Um, looks pretty good. It looks like, I think they... They went a little tarzan y with it, uh, yeah. like a kid living in the jungle. I don't think that's the original storyline, but I think it's their version of trying to bring it back, um, especially with all the latest, you know, you know, mm-hmm. kids in the jungle kind of thing surviving. And here's this dragon. Unfortunately, I think it's going to be very 
cliche. You're going to be mm. able to know what's going to happen before it happens oh, kind yeah. of movie. But we'll yeah. see. We'll yeah. see. I'm excited. Yeah, that was directed by David Lowry. And it does have a good cast. You got Robert Redford, Bryce Dallas Howard, Wes Bentley, Carl Urban is in it. Um, I like Carl Urban. Yeah, and it's going to be released August 12th. And then, of course, everyone's favorite one that's going to come back is Jason Bourne. Released July 29th, director Paul Greengrass. You know, starring Matt Damon, Julia Stiles. Uh, yeah. The only thing um, I, I will say about the Jason Bourne, I saw the trailer. I know there's a, probably a lot of Bourne Identity people are going to come and try to shoot me through the damn <laughs> microphone. But I liked the first one. I did not like the second one. I liked the one where they got rid of uh, him for a little while and they brought the other guy on. I love that guy. The He plays... Um, Jeremy Renner? Yeah. Um, you know, so he plays in the Avengers and stuff. And I really liked it. I saw the preview. The only beef I have with the Bourne series is in the first one, they didn't do this at all. But in the second one, in the, from on, they have close-knit action camera. Like, the camera's so close, mm. I can't tell what the fuck is going on. Like, I literally stand there and I'm like, did, did he... Who, which one of you kick me? You know, like, <laughs> it's literally that bad. Like, I, I don't... So, And I saw in the preview that... It looks like it's going to be filmed that way. I'm really curious. I want to go see it. So it's not one of those things I'm bashing the movie before it started. But I really wish they would get away from that action sequences that are mm-hmm. so close. Mm-hmm. All the entire fight. Mm-hmm. Not, it's not like it backs up and lets you show you and then it gets in. It literally is the entire fight. is You see feet and rustling and the camera. And I literally feel like I want to throw up. And then it's like fight over. Yeah, you kind of see a blur. And then it's like, I see blur. Guy ground. Guy on the ground. Yeah, and I don't. I'm not really a big fan of that kind of action filming, you know. Yeah. All right, now we got Jack Reeser, Never Go Back, in action. Oh man, Tom Cruise. Um, what do I gotta say about Tom Cruise? I used to not like him very well. I mean, he like his earlier movies were not bad, and then all of a sudden, like he he made Jack Reacher. And it wasn't just Jack Reacher. He made a couple films in there, and uh, they've been really good. So here I am. Jack Reacher comes out. I see the trailer. The only thing I like was the Chevelle, and I'm like. <sighs> You know, I don't really want to watch this. So, you know, months go by. It comes out on Blu-ray. My girlfriend's like, you want to watch Jack Reacher? I'm like, all right, fine. Let's just watch Jack Reacher. So I watched Jack Reacher, and I was blown away at the movie. So when I saw that there was another one coming, I had to see the preview. It looks good. It, it looks like it looks like a really good film. Because the Mission Impossibles, they lost me, and then they brought it back. And it was like, oh, okay. And I don't mean like lost me like they brought it back. I mean, literally it brought me mm-hmm. back to liking them, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one's going to be released October 21st. Uh, it was directed by, it's directed by uh, Edward Z- uh, Zwick. And uh, it has Tom Cruise, uh, Colby Sombers, which I should know her from The Avengers, How I Met Your Mother, uh, Adidas Hodge, Holt McHenry, Robert Kepner. Uh, the next one I saw is another animation movie that's going to be released on, July, on September 23rd, which is The Storks, uh, which is about the birds that go and deliver the babies and apparently they stopped doing it and one of the i guess a girl that grew up with the storks decided i'm going to deliver this baby and trying to start the whole thing all over again that's how the kind of the preview went Mm -hmm. so it looks kind of it looks pretty funny uh i thought it looked pretty funny uh kyle i don't know if you saw the new the new trailer yet on that one i haven't seen that one yet but you know it's a dreamworks movie come on i mean sometimes they can't go wrong so i think it'll be doing pretty good that one stars andy samberg Kelsey Grammer, uh, Keegan Michael, uh, excuse me, Keegan, Michael Keegan, and Jordan Peele. They're both in the movie. They're, they're voice actors in the movie. Cool. And then finally. I'm not a big Andy Samberg fan, but if he's just in by voices, I'm cool with that. Yeah. <laughs> and then we got finally. This is, this is one thing that uh, my man over here is not really a religious person, to say it that way. But we got Ben-Hur coming out. It's a remake of yeah, the original. Yeah, but I love epic movies. Yes. Epic and, movies, just, there's not enough of them. There's not enough epic movies. And this looks to me like an epic movie. Oh. Um, you guys can put that aside. All I'm saying is is that they need more movies like this. Really, like, high-budget um, movies. So this movie either is going to rock or it's going to totally, totally suck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's coming off real big. Uh, from the tr- uh, the trailer that we have seen, it's going to be released. I mean, for God's sakes, it's got Morgan Freeman in it. Yes. And that doesn't always mean it's going to be awesome. It does not, but it does mean it's going to at least have Morgan Freeman in it. That's all I got to say. <laughs> that's, all, that's all we need. You know, somebody that everybody poops. <laughs> 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 oh, man. But that's going to be released August 12th, directed by Timur 
I'm sorry I'm not going to pronounce your last name because I will butcher it, but it has Jack Hudson, Toby Kebble, Morgan Freeman, and so much more. A big cast list there. Uh, that's all I have on new trailers that have been released. Uh, God damn it. Hurry the fuck up. It's getting too long. <laughs> have to change it. Uh, I found out a little bit, uh, some new stuff on the Justice League movie after the Batman, the Batman v Superman. Mm-hmm. I guess would you, would you call, what would you call that? A, I enjoyed the movie, but it would be like a you know beautiful disaster to say it that way. Or, uh, yeah, it, it had. Um, we're not gonna do a whole review on that movie right now, but let's just say it was it was okay, and I watched it, and I was not like I need to leave the theater. It was good. It just had some moments in it where you're like, what yeah. the fuck? Yeah, yeah. That's how. I mean, that's how you were. And what's I thought they, they got rid of him on it, but Jack Snyder is actually they brought him in to direct it still. Uh, you know, it's going to star Ben Affleck, Henry Cavill, Gal Gadot, Jason Momoa, Ezra Miller, Ray Fisher. And then it also has Amanda Heard and J.K. Simmons that are going to be in it. And uh, it's not going to be as dark from what I've read. It's not going to be a dark movie as like Zack Snyder always has it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're actually going to see, you know, Batman going to be like, oh, he's not going to be that guy who hates humanity anymore. He's going to be supposedly Superman watching Superman give up his life to save whoops. If you didn't see Batman v Superman too bad, you know, because, uh, Superman gave his life or he has a new, new hilt on, I guess, new thing on humanity. And so he's going to try to go ahead and form the justice league. And that's what basically this one's going to be about them coming together and then come to find out that they're way behind on a big catastrophe. that's going to happen to earth itself. And they said, you know, they, they said the Barry Allen character is going to be, you know, which is the Flash, is going to be the smart-ass Flash that we've seen. So, you know, it's not going to be dark. He's going to be funny. And uh, Cyborg is supposed to be total CG on him. But the actor's still there, you know. But most of it is, most of it is going to be CG that's on him. All right. Uh, and Wonder Woman, of course, she, you know, beautiful Gal Gadot, she's going to be. I think she did a really good Wonder Woman. She I was one of the highlights of the yeah, movie. Of the like movie. seriously, like uh, um, big surprise that you know Ben Affleck, and I'm not a huge Ben Affleck fan at all, but he did a great job. And um, but she was even as little parts as she had, she just did. She had that kind of Wonder Woman prowess. You know, like yeah. you you felt like there was something more to her than what was going on, and that's all you need from Wonder Woman up until she showed that's what she was. Yeah, yeah, she was yeah. like I said, she was great. She, she can actually show as a princess. She can show that elegance, but then when she has to be a badass, she will be a badass. Right. Yeah, but again, direction too. Um, a little scared if that's how he's going to do it. Anytime a director gets out of their you know comfort zone, mm-hmm. you you run the risk of either making a really really good film because his comfort zone sucked, um, and the Shyamalan. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, um, mm-hmm. or he ends up making a uh, total flop on its ass, mm-hmm. and then. Yeah, you know, true. Yeah. So you you run the risk with that one, but I think it's I think the help of actual DC, the CEO from DC, uh, when he kind of took control over it a little bit, I think that's also going to help him out a little bit there. Okay, on that end, I think, I believe so. And then also in movie news, Castlevania, Castlevania. What am I? I told you I'm in the gaming and I'm already thinking Castlevania, Hotel Transylvania. They actually got their they got the green light for the third one. Mm, okay. But uh, did you see the second one? Yes, I saw the second one. What'd you think of the second one compared to the first one? The first one I liked way better. The second one was okay to me. What you're gonna like about this one is is that on the third one, it got the green light, and the director from the first one is gonna do the third okay. one. Okay. And uh, that's all I know about the movie. And I'm like, I'm I'm actually kind of looking forward to it now. But there are furthermore about Hotel Transylvania is that they're also making an animated series on Disney for it. And it's going to focus on, uh, Selena Gomez's character, Mavis. Okay. Of her growing up as a teenager and upcoming this week in movies, June 24th, we have independence day resurgence. Oh man, this yes. movie right here, this, <laughs> this movie right here. I have got to the minute I found mm-hmm. out I was coming this weekend. I'm like tickets. Mm-hmm. Where are we? Take, take my money, take my money. 
Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, at first, when I heard about it, I was like, I hope it's not gonna be cheesy, because sometimes when they come out with a part two, it's gonna be cheesy. But the previews have been phenomenal. They've yeah, and they great. got like ninety nine percent of the cast back from the original. I know Will Smith couldn't do it because of prior engagements, mm-hmm. but definitely looks like they're going to uh, do Independence Day justice. Yeah. They're definitely going to do Independence Day, Independence Day yeah. justice. Okay, and then we also have The Shallows, which I got to see the um, preview for this at the World of Warcraft uh, movie. And uh, it looks pretty fucked up. It looks like a a remake of Jaws meets, you know, realistic mm-hmm. version, like a realistic mm-hmm. version of Jaws. So um, by the girl, she swims out. She's swimming with these people. Um, she's surfing, I'm sorry, with these people at a beach. And then next thing you know, the other two guys get eaten by a shark. And now the shark is basically Mm -hmm. stalking her ass and she's on a rock and she's trying to make it back to shore. Um, which really isn't that far because it's it's like, it's like 200 yards. It says, yeah. And it's, it's a shallow water and this huge great right is just swimming right around her. Right. So that definitely looks like something I got to check out. I'm not sure if I'll see in the theaters, Mm -hmm. but definitely want to check that out. Uh, the next uh, movie that's coming out that interests us is A Free State of Jones, starring Matthew McConaughey. When I saw the preview for this movie, I'm going to say right now, I was actually very interested. I had never heard about this in history, and as many of you will find out, I am a history freak. I love history stuff, especially war history. So to find out that this actually happened, it's based on a true story, really kind of blew me away. Never heard of it at all. Neither have I. Neither have I. And I was, like I said, I was interested too. I was never a history buff, and, and this is true, and I ain't going to lie to you. You won't be a history buff in high school, but when you once you get out, you will be a very big one. Yeah. And when I heard about this too, I was all like, "Oh my god, that's a, I didn't know about this story. They didn't talk about this in school, Mm-mm. you know." And then now we're like, "It's like okay, this looks like an interesting movie." Yeah, that one looks good. Another movie that's coming out that uh, is only going to be in limited uh, uh, release is going to be called Swiss Army Man. They keep posting this movie mm-hmm. all over the place. Mm-hmm. It's it's in every ad that I see. For a movie that's got limited release, it certainly is being mm-hmm. released like trailer wise everywhere I go. YouTube mm-hmm. is being blasted mm-hmm. with it. You name it. Mm. Yeah, it stars uh, Dan Kwan Dan and Daniel uh, uh, Radcliffe. Yeah, Daniel Dan Radcliffe. Radcliffe. That was Harry Potter and Daniel Radcliffe. I think he's dead in the movie, but they they use him as a Swiss Army knife. Right. That's why he's called Swiss Army Man. Oh, it stars Paul Dano. I'm sorry, I was reading the directors and Daniel Radcliffe, Mary Elizabeth Weinstead, and Timothy Olich. So that one looks pretty decent. Uh, another one coming out is called Wiener Dog. And I believe that has uh, Bill Murray, right? It doesn't show him on the starring cast. It shows uh, Greta Gerwig, Charlie Tahan, Danny DeVito. Danny DeVito, my bad. Danny, Danny DeVito. DeVito. Uh, yeah, it, it's fun. It, from the preview that I saw from it, it's a good comedy. It's kind of like a, I guess you would say, a, uh, dry comedy to it. And mm-hmm. it's like it, it all kind of based around them. They all have they're all walking the wiener dog, mm-hmm. and I'm just and the stuff that they do at home or whatever just kind of brings a you know a laughter to you on it. Right. Well, he does that show Always Sunny in Philadelphia, so you know the sarcasm is Danny DeVito's thing. So oh, yeah, yeah. It doesn't really surprise me that he's going to have sarcasm as a movie-based thing. So. Yeah. And that's all for the movies that are coming out this weekend. Uh, I look forward to doing a review of the... Uh, Independence Day? Yeah, fantastic. I look mm-hmm. forward to doing that one for you guys. And that's all I have on movie news right now. And that's it for movie news. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now we're going to go into TV news and our little take on well, TV, TV and streaming. Yeah, TV and streaming. Let's say it that way. Uh, on Netflix, uh, we got stuff going out on Netflix. There's a whole list. You might want to go. There's stuff coming out by July, end of July, and then there's stuff going to come in at the, by, all through July. Uh, we're going to give you a couple of names that we believe that you should yeah, check out yeah, before. Che- yeah, check out before couple ones here. A Clockwork Orange. If you haven't seen A Clockwork Orange, definitely a cult classic. Uh, a League of Their Own. Um, that's also getting out of here. Um, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. <laughs> Cheech and Chong's Up in Smoke. I orderly. <laughs> Gotta wash it, is he? Um, a couple other ones that are leaving out of here. Mouse Hunt. Uh, and most of the Star Trek uh, movies. Star Trek, The Motion Picture, Wrath of Khan, Search for Spock. Final Frontier, Voyager Home, The unders- Undiscovered Country, Generations, uh, Talladega Nights, The Ballad of Ricky Bobby, Ricky Bobby, 
We're number one. Woo! Ooh. All right. That sucks because that's piss actually. excellent. <laughs> I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> um, Team America, World Police, um, Witness. By, by also we got Serenity leaving on July sixteenth. So those are just a few of the ones that are getting out of here. So if you do like them or you haven't checked them out and uh, it's on your Netflix, uh, I would definitely check them out for sure. Uh, yeah, and this is all the list. Is, the list that I, where I found it at was on Collider dot com. So if you want to check out the full list, go there. And also they they also had the list of upcoming coming up uh, to Netflix in July. And you know I have there's a quite a bit of movies here and that you know that y'all really need to see. You know. Uh, all the Back to Futures one, two, and three. Even though so, you know, I think three kind of went kind of a little cheesy a little bit, but it still it actually fit and did well with the movie. You know, so I do recommend watching all three of them. You can watch them in a row; it'd be great in one day, in one fucking night. You know, if you Hell can yeah. do it. Uh, also, we have uh, <laughs> you can't mess up. You can't you, you can't mess up old Eddie Murphy flicks. Beverly Hills Cop one and two. They're coming to it. Uh, Kurt Russell's uh, Big Trouble in Little China. Excellent movie. Definite. Hell yeah. Kurt Russell, watching. man. Fucking hell yeah. Yeah. I think I might want to. I think. Uh, you know what old Jack Burton's <laughs> got to say about that? I believe we should do a live tweet movie thing with that one. Hell yeah. Uh, That's a fucking classic. That's some kettle corn and talking shit, shit night right there. Bring out the bud. Let's do this. <laughs> uh, you got Cinderella Man with uh, Russell Crowe. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a good, really good underground movie. Um a lot of people haven't watched it. I tell them, hey, have you seen Cinderella Man? And I'm a huge boxing movie fan. And most people haven't watched it. It is a really hard up-and-coming story movie to watch. It's uh, during the Great Depression. Um, there's a lot of things that happened. Um, and, man, definitely watch Cinderella Man. Oh, yeah. And then, of course, you got The Italian Job. Oh, good movie. Good, movie. good, movie. good, good, good movie. heist movie. There's all the lethal weapons. I'm uh, On that one, I forgot to kind of highlight that one. I kind of saw it there. All the lethal weapons are all real good. Uh, we got Marco Polo season two. If you haven't seen season one, uh, recommend seeing it. It's a really good series, and season two will be coming out in July. Also, let's see what else we got here. Uh, Turner and Hooch, another classic comedy with Tom Hanks. Hell yeah! Uh, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much you know that we think is important. But if you want the full list, again, I say go to Collider dot com. They uh, they have the full list of what's leaving and what's coming uh, to Netflix. And now, a little bit of other news here. I'm curious, in TV-wise, there is going to be a new Ghostbusters animated TV series coming in 2018. No shit. No shit. Uh, It was announced today on the 21st of June here. Uh, Sony Animation is going to create, it's called Ghostbusters Ecto Force. Uh, the, The new animation TV series will further explain the Ghostbusters cinematic universe and focus on the new generation of Ghostbusters in the year 2050. So it's going to be towards the future and who these Ghostbusters are going to be, you know, capturing ghosts around the world, not just in New York city. Now they're going around the world and helping other local teams, which there's going to be more Ghostbusters Hmm. teams around the world. And there's going to be, they're going to focus on more new gear and everything. So it should, hopefully it should be pretty good. Uh, I'm kind of interested in seeing how this is going to go. Uh, what are your thoughts on it? Sounds pretty good to me. I mean, sometimes I always look forward to the new cartoons. Um, they're not always that great. Sometimes I get weirded out by some of the animation they do. Sometimes it's really good. Sometimes it sucks. Um, really, it's one of those things where it's a uh, flip a coin. It's either going to be really good and everybody's going to be like, oh, yeah, this is fucking cool. Or they're just going to literally be like, I don't like it because it's not a reasonable growth business. And, and don't get me wrong, I'm a huge original Ghostbusters fan. Bill Murray, all the way, what's up? But the reality is is that we have to move on and we have to see what the new creators can do with it. Yeah. It's not always going to be good. I mean, that's just that's just a fact. Not all yeah. remakes, not all retwists. Yeah. You know, did I like the trailer when it came out of the new one, the movie-wise? No. But as far as the... Um, What's it called? Uh, the, the, the new animated the new series. series. Yeah, yeah. Look forward to it. They can do a lot of things with that. Yeah. All right. And then furthermore on here on some TV news. Now, some shows that I like to watch, uh, like uh, coming up Arrow, uh, that's on the CW, Arrow Season 5. Uh, it's been uh, uh, Madison McLaughlin, who played Evelyn Sharp in Season 4. Uh, she played as... Uh, 
she came in season four as the black canary impersonating the black canary after the black canary in the show died. Uh, and she was there to kill Damien dark and for killing her parents. Well, she's going to come back in season five as, uh, Artemis, the other comic book character that was with the green arrow and that, that green arrow train. So she's going to come in as Artemis, but we're going to probably see Oliver cream, Oliver queen played by uh Stephen Amell, uh, put her under his, under his wing and trying to train her to, to uh, not to kill, but just to, you know, say, you know, be the, be the good hero. Mm-hmm. And then also, I also watch Gotham, which comes on Fox and they're, they, they got season three, uh, season two, season one was a good opener for him. It was kind of slow and everything, but season two of Gotham, I do recommend watching it. It was rise of the villains and oh my God, the penguin steals the show most of the time. He is one of the most excellent, uh, actors that they got, uh, to play, uh, as a young upcoming penguin. You know, because this Gotham is based with just following Jim Gordon when he first got to Gotham and Bruce Wayne's a little kid and everything. And so it's it's it it kind of went off away from the book, but it it is it was really good. So in season two, they cast Jamie Chung to play Valerie Vale, which is Vicky Vale's aunt. So I don't know who's going to be playing Vicky Vale, who has to be very young at the time, because Vicky Vale was uh, what was she? uh a news person when Batman was Batman. And so if Batman's a still a little, you know, a young boy, you really can't have Vicky Vale already in the news. Hmm. So this is going to be your aunt coming into Gotham. They're going to bring her in. Uh, Jamie Chung, you probably know her from I know the first movie I saw her in was Dragon Ball evolution, which I don't recommend. Don't watch. <laughs> <laughs> Like, tell me how you really feel. <laughs> Fuck that movie. Uh, she was also in, uh, well, she's been in a lot. She was also in Iron Fist uh, with uh, with Roz. Was it Roz, right? No. I can't remember. Anyway, uh, we'll, we'll, you know, the, we'll edit that out. <laughs> uh, and she was in, uh, oh, my God. I just went dumbfounded. I had it all in my head. Well, anyways, uh, back to that. So it's going to be an interesting choice on what, how, and how she's going to be into the, the show itself. And then we, if just to follow up on it, Gotham will return on September 18th at 8 PM on Fox while arrow season five premieres October 5th at 8 PM on the CW. Uh, that two, the, the October 4th arrow, I mean, uh, flash uh will debut their season three which the flash both season one and two have been phenomenal i do recommend watching them it's a very good show and uh legends of tomorrow is supposed to be on the thursday after arrow which will be the sixth and supergirl moved from channel 11 cbs to the cw and they're debuting her on that friday which is going to be the seventh but they should move her back to the Monday hour the next week. And that's all I have on TV news. I don't know. Do you have anything else? Um, yeah, yeah, I can talk about some Game of Thrones. Um, since I'm not going to catch up with you with all the season, I did get to see the Battle of the Bastards. And I... Um, huge Jon Snow fan. I'm a huge Stark fan. If you don't know much about it or don't know much about the series itself, uh, we will not get into it because fuck you. Go back and watch it because there's way too much. Oh my God, I'll be here for like six hours telling you all about what happened up to now. But let's talk about Battle of the Bastards. First of all, this series has, up to this date, this series has been uh, nothing but phenomenal since I watched it. And I'm addicted to it. Um, hell, I'd pay for HBO just to watch the fucking Game of Thrones. I don't even watch anything else on HBO. I'm watching the uh, this, se- this season, and so far it's been okay. And I know a lot of people will going to be like, what? Okay, what does that mean? There's been a lot of really cool things that have happened in the season so far. Um, you know, especially if you know the series Hodor, you know, it means hold the door. And uh, basically, yeah, it means hold the door. He just broke it down, and he says uh, his name's Hodor because he actually had to hold the door. So there's a thing with Bran, which you don't... Rick is looking at me because he's been a while since he's seen it. I don't want to ruin it because I know he's going to catch up. <laughs> he's going to catch up, but I will tell you that if you haven't seen Battle of the Bastards, and it is worth every second of it, 
absolutely amazing episode. Uh, I was sitting on the edge of my seat, and I have not sat on the edge of my seat this entire season. Uh, again, someone will say, you know, hey, psh, it's been good. Yeah, it's been good, but it's not been great. Um, not like the season before. And so, you know, even with the season before that. So this one was like the epic, you know, wow, there's a whole lot of things. Khaleesi's back. She came back and she um, killed the slave masters. And then finally, Jon Snow and uh, Ramsey Bolton go at it. And uh, at first, literally, I had this weird feeling, uh, spoiler alert, if you don't want me to tell you or you don't want to know, skip ahead, I'm sorry, skip ahead a few minutes and just go for it, but I'm going to tell you because I'm really excited. So Jon Snow goes up against Ramsay Bolton, and um, basically what Ramsay Bolton does in the start of it is they have the two armies meeting at dawn, and Ramsay has uh, Rickon Stark as a prisoner. And that's John's, um, one of John's brothers and basically says, okay, um, if you want him, come get him. So John lines up his army. He stares out. And then all of a sudden Ramsey shows up on horseback, dragging, um, Rickon behind it. And he basically looks like he's about to stab him to death and he releases him. And he's like, well, let's play a game, shall we? And he makes Rickon run across the battlefield while he's shooting arrows at him. That's and um, <laughs> yeah, so only part was zigzag, 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 zigzag. <laughs> and said um, he doesn't zigzag. And, you know, so John rides out after him. He basically, Rickon gets to Rickon as Rickon gets shot with an arrow and dies. And he lo- loses his fucking mind. Like, and uh, basically charges single handedly at the army of the Bolt. So 6,000 to 2,000. And it's like, no, it's 1 to 6,000. He basically says, F it. And um, so the Onion Knight, uh, who's his right-hand man, um, basically is like, go, follow your commander. So he sends his cavalry, and they send everybody in at one time. Just total horrible military strategy, like just Mm -hmm. retarded. We just charge them, fuck it. And um, so they were going to lose. A lot of their men died, um, and then the Boltons basically surrounded them, and um, they were pushing them all together. And uh, they kind of did a Spartan thing, you know, like around the shields and just, you know, shoved uh, spears at them. And um, they couldn't get out of it. So they had bodies all back up on the uh, one corner they couldn't get out of. And then they were basically half sphered, you know, by shields and spears. And they're just about to die. And you're literally on the edge of your seat going like, Ugh! and then the soldiers of the veil, which is another topic we'll get into later, but the veil show up and um Littlefinger was is with Sansa Stark and they're standing on the edge of the battlefield and the the cavalry comes and just mows the living fucking shit out of the Boltons <laughs> and insta save, you know, so John goes running after Ramsey and if you know anything about Ramsey, you know he's a twisted, sick bastard who needs to get his. He's been needing to get his for a very long time. And um the giant basically bursts in. Ramsey basically comes inside the fort, and they're like, we have no army. And he's like, no, we have Winterfell. And then all of a sudden, the fucking giant bursts in, and you know, they, there's like a badass scene where he gets a spear through his hand, and he just tears his fucking the spear like right off his hand, and he bursts in, and um, he's covered in arrows, and the giant's going to die because the giant was on Jon Snow's side. And um, then uh, Ramsey shoots an arrow into the fucking giant's eye, kills him, pisses off John not like he shouldn't be pissed off already and then he's like remember that one on one thing you wanted us to do let's do that and so Ramsey challenges him basically he shoots arrow at him he picks up a shield charges at Ramsey slow walking taking the arrow hits and then basically bashes him the living shit in his face <laughs> and at the end of it at the end of it all Sansa's there she's like where did you put him and they put him in the cages with his dogs uh, but not he hasn't fed in like seven days. Oh shit! And his own fucking dogs eat his ass. And I literally was like, "Oh yes! Oh my god! It's so good, so good!" Just I wanted that douche to get his, and he got his bad, dude. His own fucking dogs ate him. I was just, I literally was like, just. Whew. <sighs> it was so good. Like you get that relief. Like yeah, justice was served. So, you know, so, we sit there like, oh god, yes. <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. No, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> you need some alone time. No, no, it was good. Um, overall, one of the best shows of the season. This coming Sunday, they're going to basically be supposedly it's going to be a two-hour season finale. That's the rumor. That's going around. And you have to understand with Game of Thrones, it's all rumors. It always has been rumors. There's rumors on top of rumors. 
but um, they have a lot of the things to fill. I think what's really disappointing to me is as um, I have to wait a whole year um, to next see the next series and the next episode. It's literally every year. It's not. Mm. No, it's not. I thought this. I thought they were going to release it in like in October or something. I, I I mean, if that's something. it, is I definitely need to look into that because I. It's really disappointing. Um, being a huge fan of the series and loving it that I can only get because that's how it's been so far it's every year every year and we binge watch them you know we'll watch like whole series and um, it's great it's it's awesome series if you don't know anything about Game of Thrones or you haven't go buy that shit at you know your local store get the blu-rays and sit down and just give up your whole life for like a week or two And (laughs) and it is so worth it yeah that's cool cool I'm gonna have to, like I said, I still gotta catch up. So you know, even though you, you it's not, I don't care. You can spoil the hell out of it. I still make, oh, dude, I, I still make it enjoyable to watch. So so visually stimulating the show is, and and also frustrating because you you want these characters, you want to, you want them to live, you don't want them to die. You you get attached to them, and this this guy loves killing off characters, <laughs> and you're just like, no, oh, no. You know, so if you know anything about him, you know that he's going to kill off some characters. And I'm just waiting every episode. Please don't kill off my favorite character. Please don't kill <laughs> off my favorite character. You know, um, so, yeah, definitely worth watching. Definitely worth checking out. Cool, cool. Uh, well, hold on. Well, I mean, I'm going to go into something else here. I was like, I watched the Voltron series. You did. The new Voltron series on Netflix. I do recommend everybody to watch it. I was a Voltron fan when I was younger. And the new one came out. I watched it. I enjoyed it. It was funny. It was dramatic at times. Uh, they had everything aspect of it. What were your thoughts on it, Kyle? Did you enjoy it? Um, going into it, um, it had been a very long time since I had seen any of the Voltrons. In fact, uh, I haven't watched Voltron since I was a kid. So um, sitting down and watching the first season of this, um, hopefully they come out with another one, um, another second of the season. So far, I really liked it. Um, I am not the hugest fan, though, of the fact that they have to turn the uh, animation into, like, I don't know what you want to call that, like a CGI-based kind of computery animation. Like, it goes from drawing to computer Mm -hmm. animation to drawing to computer animation. I really wish series would focus just entirely on one or the other. Mm -hmm. But overall, really fun series to watch. Um, Brought back a lot of memories of just me being a kid. You know, I, I would recommend it to someone who wants to watch it. It's a big, it's a big tease, but they do it well. They yeah. do it well, and I mean by tease is because it's only nine episodes or ten episodes. It's eleven. Ele- okay, eleven, 11 episodes. episodes. And watching it, you're gonna feel like you went through it pretty fast. Yeah. And just for whatever reason, it just felt that way. Yeah, <laughs> it went through pretty fast. And spoilers: when you get to the end, you're gonna be no, <laughs> because such a cliffhanger. <laughs> But uh, anyways, that's all we have on TV news for this moment. Okay, now we're going to move on to gaming news. And we're going to talk about the gaming news that interested us. And one of the biggest ones that has interested me and uh, probably a lot of Fallout 4 fans is the new DLC that uh, just got dropped today. Uh, it is Contraptions. Basically, it is a uh, enhancements for our settlements, uh, stairs, elevators, things like that. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I guess there's going to be like, uh, looks like torture devices and all sorts of things in there. You know, typical <laughs> Fallout fashion. Um, I was going to play it today. I have not got a chance to play it yet with the DLC because mm-hmm. it was taking forever to download for whatever reason, but it got dropped today. Yeah. Uh, and I got to go home and download it and then uh, give it a shot. But I don't know. I'm right now I'm in the moment of checking Uncharted 4, which by I'm telling you, it is amazing on the PS4. On the Naughty Dog has never failed on the Uncharted series. I do recommend everybody to go out and get it. Uh, I'll have a full review on it before, but I'll also let Kyle play it so he can get a review on it as well. Yeah, I'm to check that yeah. out. Yeah. Um, the latest thing that I'm looking forward to, though, is the Fallout 4 uh, Nuka Cola expansion that's coming out soon. Um, the, what is it? Nuka Wasteland or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, that one looks really, really good. It's going to be the last DLC mm-hmm. for Fallout 4, so I'm a little sad. Um, that's gonna, they're not going to release any more content for it at all. So I'm assuming that they're going to focus more on bigger projects um, and well, move on from that. Yeah, at E3, Beth- Bethesda, which is the creators of Fallout, uh, they brought out so much stuff coming out. I mean, I didn't know that they did Doom when that was just released recently. They also they did Quake. They got Quake coming out. Mm. They, uh, they also did Elder Scrolls that's coming out. And so I'm like, they're they're getting pretty big. Speaking of publishers, uh, Electronic Arts is releasing 
Titanfall 2. And the exciting news about that is it is also going to be released on what? The PS4. Oh, wow. Uh, Xbox uh, only exclusive uh, is now on uh, PS4. It's being released on, uh, what day was that? August 29th. August 29th. I look forward to that. Because yeah, I didn't get a chance to play the last one. Yeah. I, don't, I don't have Xbox, though. So. Yeah, I don't have Xbox One either, so I never got a chance to check it out. Mm-mm. And it's kind of a combination of first-person shooter to jumping into a mech, ro- mech robot, I believe. Yeah, I saw a lot of the gameplay. It looked really fun. Uh, it did look like it had a lot of repetitive action. Typical. It's a typical you know, multiplayer you know, uh, shoot 'em up kind of thing. But I th- it looks fun. It looked like um, like one of those games that you would just, with your buddies, blast the shit out of each other. And hey, by the way, if you piss me off enough, I'll get out of this mech warrior and shove it up your ass. Yes. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And then also, if you haven't seen the trailers, if you haven't got excited as me and Kyle have, Battlefield 1 will be coming out October 21st. Go out, pre-order the goddamn game. Oh, yeah, dude. I've already done pre-ordered it. Kyle still has to go out and get his pre-ordered. Yes, <laughs> We're talking all this mess, and he hasn't done it yet. It is coming out. All the gameplay footage that you see is remarkable. It is astonishing. It It's not accurate to World War One, but, but gosh darn it. Yeah, who cares? Who cares? Yeah, it looks, it looks really well done. Uh, been really following this game. The moment he told me about it, I was like, World War One? What the? Wait, that sounds pretty cool. And I have just, even from the teaser trailer, was just like so excited, so ready for this to come out. And now that we've seen the gameplay and I get to see the action and I get to see the customization and the maps are bigger and the, the multiplayer is going to be bigger. And oh my God, the guns look fucking cool. The tanks look fucking cool. I, I'm really excited about this game. Like f- phenomenally excited. Yeah. I mean, uh, don't get me wrong. Call of Duty is out there. Uh, the new one that's coming out, not getting really big push. I mean, there's a lot of people that really downed it and everything. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's still going to have its storyline, whatever. Battlefield, is. they do have a campaign probably that's going to be on it. And I understand their campaigns are not really great on Battlefields, but that's not what you get Battlefield for. You you get Battlefield for the multiplayer. Oh, yeah. And everything you can do on multiplayer. Well, and it's such an easier multiplayer. I, I'm not a big Call of Duty fan. And the reason well, most people will know if I eventually find out is I'm a big... If I have a fucking bazooka, I want to... And you're behind the wall, I'm going to blow up the fucking wall. Why can I not blow up this wall? Why is it there? What is it doing there? Why is this wall not gone yet? I have blown this wall up. And nothing fucking happens. And it, it just bothers the shit out of me. So... When I got into Battlefields and I heard that you could drive a tank through a goddamn building, I, I was like, no, this is my kind of game. Yeah. You know, so for me playing it and playing with my friends, and I know a lot of people that play it, um, that is the main reason we play. It is a huge battle field, mm-hmm. and that's what I like. I like that there's tanks, there's helicopters, there's vehicles, mm-hmm. and it just brings such um, uh, originality to just multiplayer only. Kind of mm-hmm. like we just with the Titanfall thing. You yeah. know, you get into Mech Warrior, but it's the same thing with us. We got tanks, we got, we got this, we got that. I mean... You got different class heroes. Yes, it's not military correct. You know, it's not you know war, you know time correct. But overall, so far the gameplay I've seen has just been awesome. You yeah. know, and then watching like I was watching the E three uh, reviews on it and everything, and these were the kids and celebrities. You know, you have no idea how many celebrities play this game because uh, you never know because you never know everybody's name. They always have something different when they put on it. And you could be playing with Terry Crews or you could be playing with Jamie Fox. But when I was watching everybody play this, everybody was having fun. And in Battlefield 4, we had fun, but at times you kind of lose it. But this one looks like it's going to keep you there. It's going to keep you intense because all the weaponry is different. It's back to basics almost, but you still have some uh, fully auto and semis. Uh like the, the tanks f- just look the, fucking the, cool. Yeah, the tanks are huge. It's like these huge monstrosity metal boxes. Well, and it was before, like when you had a tank, you literally have you and another guy, or in a helicopter, you have you and another guy. It looks like this one, you can have multiple people in a vehicle, and you're you're driving a tank, and you're actually relying on the people in your tank to do the damage while you do the driving. And to me, like I said, somebody can say, "Well, that sucks. I want to con- full control." No, you, that this is a team based game. And that's what's going to make this game fun. You're relying yeah. on each other to kick some ass and take some names. And then also, I like the fact on the tank part, you got to look at this. On the on all the other battlefields, yeah, you shoot the tanks. And that was it. You start shooting, shooting, shooting. And once the tank couldn't roll anymore, it was going to blow up, whatever you had to get out. This one right here, 
you go, you can shoot the tank. You don't just have to shoot the tank itself. You can just aim for the tracks and take out the track where they can't go anywhere. They can get stuck in a hole and they can't get out. You know, and if they can't open the door, they can't open the door and you have a chance to kill them again. So you have to actually watch where you're going. You have to actually use the, your team inside of the uh, the tank with you to take out anybody that's actually shooting at the tracks, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that's shooting at anything. So it, it's going to bring the more team base to this. Yeah, Battlefield 1, definitely something I'm pre-ordering. Um, going to be on that. You probably won't hear from me for a week on that one. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, definitely looking forward to, to checking that game out. Yeah, I think that's uh, the – I think uh, October 21st and – and so forth. I'll be at work taking naps instead of working. <laughs> yeah, playing all that sucker all night long. All night. He's like, oh shit, there goes my alarm to go to work. Okay, I'm gonna. I'll sleep at work. <laughs> it's like you stink. You need to take a shower. <laughs> and that is the end of our first episode of the Critical Thinking Podcast. Woohoo! <laughs> okay, you can connect with us on Twitter at critical underscore thinking on Facebook and Instagram at critical thinking podcast and at Podbean. On criticalthinkingpodcast.podbean.com. And if you like the show, please show your support by five-starring the episode and telling your friends. So thank you for joining us, thinking shit through one podcast at a time.